In this video, I'm going to talk about the biosynthesis of folic acid, or otherwise known as folate. And so for this one, it's not too bad of a mechanism here. Uh, we first start out with this GTP, this uh, guanine triphosphate, which is just a, a nucleotide. And then through this GTP cyclohydrolase 1, we generate this 7,8-dihydroneoterin triphosphate. Uh, and so that is this, uh, well, I'll go through in more detail after I do a little run through here. Uh, then we have this dihydroneoterin hydrolase, which removes this uh, triphosphate off of here uh, and gives us this hydroxyl group here. Then we have dihydroneoterin aldolase, uh, which then removes, uh, which then removes all of that right there, uh, releasing this glycoaldehyde here and giving us the 7,8-dihydro-6-hydroxymethylterin. Uh, then we have this hydroxymethyldihydroteridine pyrophosphokinase, which takes an ATP and then adds these to this uh, pyrophosphate onto here. Uh, and then we have this 7,8-dihydro-6-hydroxymethylterin uh, pyrophosphate. Uh, then this dihydroteroate synthase uh, takes this P-aminobenzoic acid, or P-ABA, or PABA, which is sometimes referred to as vitamin B10. Uh, so you may notice that I'm going to uh, skip videos on vitamin, vitamins B10 and B11 because... Uh, I don't know. They're it's not they're not really vitamins uh, as we sort of understand them. Uh, vitamin B11 being salicylic acid, but this uh, PABA is sometimes called vitamin B10, and so that adds that uh, onto here uh, while also removing the pyrophosphate, and we have this uh, seven eight dihydroteroate, and then we add a glutamate onto that with uh, dihydrofolate synthetase, uh, which then gives us this, uh, what I have here in this sort of gold box is that glutamate. Uh, and then we have this dihydrofolate reductase, which uses NADH to reduce this, uh, which gets rid of this double bond here, which I have circled in blue. Uh, and makes it into a single bond. And so now I'll go through some of these, uh, some of the more, I guess, interesting reactions in a bit more detail. So this GTP cyclohydrolase 1 is probably the most complicated one out of this. Uh, and in fact, I will zoom in a little bit here so we can see it a little better maybe. Uh, and so we have the GTP here, and then we're in the active site where we have this zinc right here, uh, bound to this histidine and two cysteines. Uh, and I actually have the structure for this, which we can see here. So we see our GTP here in the, the yellow. We can see these orange is our uh, triphosphate. And then I have, uh, so this structure doesn't have the zinc, but I have in salmon, this histidine, this histine, uh, the and these two cysteines here, uh, which would both be holding the zinc, and we can see that would hold it close to this carbon right here in the five-membered ring, uh, and we can see how that uh, is being held close to that five-member ring right there. Uh, then we have this other. Uh, uh, histine here, uh, and this nitrogen will uh, will take a a hydrogen off of there, uh, which will then allow this this uh, hydroxyl group here, which would come from a water that's coordinated with this zinc, to attack this double bond here, so that we end up with this uh, OH group on this carbon right here. So that would be, you know, the the uh, this carbon on here 
Uh, and so then we have this, the electrons from this OH bond here collapse down. It causes this, uh, this bond right here to break where the electrons go uh, to this, uh, this nitrogen carbon bond here. Then this uh, carbon oxygen bond actually breaks as the electrons go to grab a hydrogen off this, uh, off this uh, histine here. And so now we end up with this structure here. We have this double bond uh, generated right here, and this double bond generated right here. Uh, then this shows that this, uh, that this now deprotonated histine uh, actually deprotonates this, uh, this OH right here. And the electrons from that oxygen go and attack the double bond here. The electrons then going up onto the nitrogen uh, and in the interim probably grabbing a hydrogen which shows the the hydrogen right there uh, but this gives us so this oxygen attacking that double bond there closes this ring here uh, and then so from here uh, we now have uh, well we now lose this right here which is uh, which is this uh, formate molecule right there so we're losing the formate in this step which is uh, this right here and then that can be released off of the sink and then a new water can come and uh, bind onto the sink to reproduce our our OH on the zinc there but anyway uh, then this shows that we uh, are now breaking this bond once again and having the double bond reformed from this nitrogen to this carbon which gives us this right here uh, then this shows that we have the double bond going from this nitrogen down to here uh, and then where another hydrogen is uh, binding onto this nitrogen right here so we have this double bond now here uh, but then the electrons from the OH collapse down the double bond electrons go and grab a a proton here a hydrogen and so we end up with this uh, this uh, carbonyl group right there uh, and so then the um, this nitrogen can actually then go and attack that that uh, carbonyl carbon right there which is what this is showing right here and that is how we then form the six member ring on here uh, and end up with our uh, seven eight dihydroneoterin triphosphate, which has these two six membered rings. And so down here, I actually uh, I found that there is this um, this feedback mechanism to actually uh, control uh, the output of this particular uh, of this GTP. Uh, CHI. And then there's this uh, GFRP, which is the uh, the GTP protein uh, feedback regulatory protein. Uh, and so the feedback regulatory protein is actually uh, going to inhibit this um, this enzyme if there is too much. Uh, of this uh, sort of further down the line tetrahydro bioterin, which is actually a cofactor for amino acid metabolism and neurotransmitter biosynthesis. So this shows DOPA, but I believe it, it's actually involved in also serotonin uh, biosynthesis. Uh, but anyway, so for this, I actually have the structure. So this is our structure here. Uh, and we see that this is happening in the interface between these two subunits here. Uh, and then I can actually add this in. And so these on the outside, these are those, uh, those feedback regulatory proteins. And you can actually see, if we zoom in on them, uh, we can actually see in orange here, these are the uh, phenylalanines, which actually, um, which actually the phenylalanines, 
uh, actually inhibit the inhibitors, which uh, make this uh, which makes this enzyme more active. Uh, but anyway, uh, then we can move on. So this uh, dihydroneoterin hydrolase is just removing this triphosphate from here. It's just uh, it's just a hydrolysis reaction, so I'm not going to go into too much detail for that. Uh, but then we have this dihydroneoterin aldolase, which then removes uh, this glycoaldehyde here. Uh, and I have that over here. And so we can see from on this, we have this, this base here, which uh, deprotonates this hydroxyl group here. Uh, the electrons collapse down onto here. The electrons from this one prime to two prime then go uh, collapse onto this right here as this double bond then goes and uh, removes a hydrogen off of an acid that would be a residue in the enzyme there. So we end up with this. So we have this hydroxyl group uh, with this double bond down here. Uh, and this here is our uh, our glycoaldehyde right there. So then this double bond, uh, so the, the electrons from this hydrogen actually collapse back down to reform this double bond here. This double bond then grabs this hydrogen and we regenerate our, our base and our acid here. And now we have this molecule right here, this 7-8, this dihydro-6-hydroxymethylterin. Uh, then this next one, which uh, is a bit of a mouthful, the hydroxymethyl dihydroteridine pyrophosphokinase uh, and this dihydroteroate uh, synthase uh, are, actually in, uh, are actually bound together like this. So this is that, uh, that one that's the mouthful, and this is the dihydroteroate synthase here. We can see that those are actually bound together into sort of a single uh, two domain protein here, which is why I have them both uh, boxed in green. Uh, also interesting about this dihydroteroate synthase here is that this was the target for these, uh, these sulfa drugs, which were the um, the antibacterial drugs that were used before the discovery of penicillin. So things like this, uh, this sulfadoxine here. And so we can see that this, uh, what it is doing is taking this uh, P-aminobenzoic acid right here, uh, like I said, sometimes called vitamin B10, and it's actually just uh, binding that uh, onto here while removing the uh, the pyrophosphate. So this nitrogen here is just kind of going and attacking that carbon right there, and then these electrons go and uh, go onto the pyrophosphate there, and we end up uh, putting this uh, this p-aminobenzoic acid onto our two-ring structure here. Whereas these sulfa drugs actually uh, came and bound uh, and bound onto it, and then we ended up having this big thing on here, which could not then be used to generate the uh, folate, and so that inhibits the folate biosynthesis. And the reason that this is helpful is because folate biosynthesis is not something that humans do, so this can target the bacteria specifically and not the humans. Uh, so it's not upsetting the uh, metabolism of humans because humans don't actually make uh, folic acid, only the bacteria do. Uh, and folic acid is needed for uh, quite a few things, including uh, making uh, nucleotides for DNA and things like that. So if the bacteria can't make this, then the bacteria die uh, but it's not going to affect the humans because humans uh, don't, as I said, synthesize folate on their own. We have to get it from our diet, which is why it's an essential vitamin for us. But anyway, 
that is uh, that that is this step here, this uh, HPPK and this dihydroteroate synthase. So, as I said, the first step is just adding this uh, this pyrophosphate onto it. The pyrophosphate. Once again, being a nice leaving group, which makes this second reaction much, uh, much more thermodynamically favorable, uh, which is, you know, essentially what adding phosphates and pyrophosphates and stuff onto molecules is for, is making uh, other reactions become more favorable. Uh, I mean, there are other reasons for phosphorylating things, which we'll get into when we get into, like, signal transduction in future videos but uh, for th this case it makes a nice leaving group which makes this uh, this adding of the uh, p amino benzoic acid more thermodynamically favorable uh, and so from there we we end up with a 78 dihydroteroate which like i said from there we are just adding this uh, glutamate which i have circled in gold here and circled in gold here uh, onto the uh, this carboxylic acid uh, that we have right here. So we're just doing another uh, nitrogen, uh, another primary amine attack onto this uh, this carbon right there, and adding that uh, that glutamate onto it. And then we have, like I said, this reduction, which just removes this double bond, and we end up with this single bond right here. And that is our tetrahydrofolic acid. That's our, our folic acid or folate. So folic acid is just telling us that these are protonated here, where folate would just be O minuses. These have OH. So that's the main difference between folic acid and folate, they, you know, it depends on what the pH of the solution there is, in is, uh, but they can kind of be used interchangeably. Uh, but anyway, that is uh, how GTP, this guanine triphosphate, is turned into the uh, tetrahydrofolic acid, the tetrahydrofolate, the folic acid, folate, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and so these are used for methyl group transfers, uh, but uh, I won't get into that right now. We will get into that when we get into the uh, the fairly complicated uh, folic acid uh, sort of uh, cycle or uh, biochemical pathway in future videos. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next video where I will uh, get to vitamin B12.